Hello, welcome to this video where I will show some advanced usage of the editor. In a previous video called Wicked Engine The First Steps, I showed the very basic usage. Now I would like to show something more complicated than that. For example, how to select objects, how to move them. You can select objects with the right mouse button and move them if you enable the translator widget. Like this. You can also rotate and scale them with the S and R buttons. You can use the undo and redo functionality as you would expect. Let's say that you want to duplicate the trees on this little scene, then you can select a tree, press the Ctrl D button to duplicate it and move it about. You can also use the Ctrl C to put an object to the clipboard and then use Ctrl V to put it down again. If you press the Ctrl C, then you put the object to the clipboard and in this case you can use the Instance Placement tool to put down objects more quickly to the scene. For this, just press the Ctrl and Shift buttons together and then click on the scene and a tree that is on the clipboard will be placed to the location that you picked. This really easily lets you put down multiple instances quickly. You might notice that when you select an instance of the tree, the rest of them are highlighted in green instead of orange. That means that those models share the same materials that the selected object uses. Also, because all these trees are instances of one tree that use the same mesh, they also share the same material. The other trees, for example, you can see the group of these same meshes or materials are different than the previous trees. Press the ask or click away to cancel the selection. On this island scene, you can see that there is a lot of grass. These are not regular objects or instances that were placed with the instance placer, but these are hair particle systems. The hair particle systems are displayed with this icon by default. You can select them as you would expect. You can also move them. And you can move these particle systems separately from the mesh. So if you open the hair particle system settings with the hair particle window, you can see that which mesh they are spawned upon. You must select a mesh for a hair particle to be displayed. So right now it is the terrain mesh, this underlying mesh. You might notice that if you move the terrain mesh, the hair particle systems don't move together. This is because they are different entities. You can if you want this, the, this to move together, you can just select the hair particle and parent it to the terrain mesh, for example, by going to the transform window and then selecting its parent as the editor terrain in this case. So now I can move these together only by just selecting the terrain mesh and since the, that grass particle system is a child of it, they will move together as you would expect. Also, in the scene graph view, you will see that the editor terrain mesh has now a hierarchy. If you open it with the triangle icon, then you will see that the editor hair is now a child of the terrain. You can change properties of the hair particle system in the hair particle system window. For example, we use the particle count easily with this slider and other settings. If you want to change the look, like the material of the hair particle, then with the hair particle still selected, go to the material window <coughs> and you can modify the material component of this particle system easily by just modifying regular material settings. If you want to place hair particles on the mesh, you can use the paint tool window. 
with the hair particle selected, choose the hair particle modes, like the hair particle add triangle, which lets you add triangles of the mesh to contribute towards the hair particle system. Let's try this. So the purple triangles show which triangles of the mesh will spawn these grass particles. And I can just add more particles by clicking on them with the paint tool. And I can also remove them. So those triangles will have no particles on top of them. I can also control the length of the particles with the hair particle length mode. And as the tips say, then alpha value will no, now control the length of the particles. So let's choose a zero length and then set up the brush to have a, have a fall off to smoothly control the length of the particles like this. As you can see, the purple triangle still spawn particles, but maybe they are just a bit smaller than the rest. With the terrain, you can introduce some hills on it with the sculpting mode that is also available in the paint tool window. Just select the terrain or any object and use the sculpting tool. For example, the sculpting add will let you just add hills on top of your terrain. And the sculpting subtract will just remove those hills and, place, uh, and just place them inwards. You can also use the undo redo functionality with all of the paint tools features as you would expect. You can paint vertex color and textures as well with the paint tool. For example, select this rock mesh and for example, paint uh, disable the translator tool and paint a red color on top of its vertices. And you can also choose to paint its texture instead of vertex colors. There are a lot of different modes to the paint tool window as well, maybe which will be described in a later video. Now other interesting things in the editor are playing with the graphics settings. There are main, two main graphics settings. First is the renderer window. This will control various uh, general graphics settings such as global illumination, uh, vSync to have an un unlocked or locked frame rate, occlusion cooling so that objects behind other objects don't get rendered enabling uh, transparent shadows or changing the game speed. For example, with the game speed you might want to increase it above the slider's limits. So with any slider you can just press on the number then and then rewrite it to whatever you want. And then if you want to reset it then just write reset in the numbers place and it will get reset to its default. You can also choose the rendering resolution so that if you have performance problems with the 3D graphics, you can reduce the render resolution to something much smaller. But the graphical elements of the the 2D graphical elements of the screen will remain just uh, very high resolution and crisp. Other graphic settings are the post-process settings that you can access from here in the post-process window. You can set various settings such as enabling lens flares if you have them set up for any lights, light shafts, which are these god rays, ambient occlusion, several screen space ambient occlusion techniques are available, and also a ray-traced ambient occlusion if you have ray-tracing GPU. 
You can also choose SSR, which are the screen space reflections and ray trace reflections for ray tracing GPUs, screen space shadows, eye adaptions, motion blur, depth of field, and just a lot of other settings that you can play around with. In the weather window, you can control various aspects of the weather, such as fog settings, cloudiness for the simple 2D clouds and cloudiness for the volumetric clouds. Settings for the sky and general weather. For example, now I have selected the real realistic sky, which behaves more realistically with the directional light. As you can see, the sky changes its color dynamically. If you are not, not using the realistic sky, you can enable this with this checkbox, but if I disable it, then I will have to set up sky colors or use a sky preset from here. You can set up the sky top and bottom colors with these horizon and zenith, control, zenith color uh, colors, color modes of the color picker. As you can see, you can set it up to use arbitrary colors that you would like. You can also enable the simple sky to just render a more simple sky with, without any atmospheric effects, just simple top and bottom colors specified. You can load the skybox here, which must be a cube map DDS texture, load color, color grading lookup textures, so you can have for example, different color grading effects such as black and white, sepia, and so on. You can enable and disable ocean simulation and rendering and change several of its parameters. The other controls here on the right control various properties of selected entities, such as when you have a light selected, you will have to open the light window to control its properties, for example its energy, its color. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions and comments, enter them below the video or the Discord server, which I linked in the description. Consider becoming a Patreon supporter to support further development and content creation, and see you in the next video.